this short. Um, the next speaker is going to be talking about wrapping very large C++ libraries in Python automatically. Um, OK? OK. Uh, you hear me? Up. So uh, yes, I will talk about, about AutoWig that was developed by uh, Christophe Pradala and myself. So as you know, Python is uh, wi widely used in scientific community. And uh, that's because there is a lot of scientific libraries. Uh, some of them are pure Python pa package, but m some are including C, C++, or Fultra libraries. And there is a lot of work that has been done for them, but still missing some libraries. I will take an example as I have an, an intern working of gene regulatory networks. Uh, those uh, networks are represented by graphs, where vertices are genes, and edges represents relation relationships between genes. In statistics, you use data frames, where you have a gene uh, measurement, and usually you made the hypothesis that it was generated be, with a multivariate normal distribution, when you can reconstruct the graph using the concentration matrix. For historical reasons, my intent sh should develop in a C++ library. And since there is many linear algebra problems, use one of the C++ libraries av available. So let's take Egan. But she also needs to make this available for biology that pay her for doing this. So we need to have an ETFS for Egan and statistical library in Python to have clear code that can be used by biologists. What she must do is by writing a header that's not really surprising for C++, but she needs to have a way to represent the C++ constructs in Python. Python provides a C API to, uh, to allow this, but it's kind of complicated and I can't ask her for, for that. There is several semi-automatic solutions like Boost Python. Boost Python is quite good, but it's still a verbose approach. You have almost the same number of lines that you header, that meaning the same thing, and you could have errors. You need to translate your documentation. It's not really uh, useful for, for large libraries. And so how can I automate the process for her? But, so, Using a, a software construction tool like Escons, we are able to automate the process with two steps. The first one is deploy, where you can install your headers and AutoWig pass them to generate a database when you could have some requests. Requests are used to control the output of your wrapping, but also to generate the wrappers that, he, that will be compiled in order to have the Python library. I will go back to the interactive workflow in order to precise what we need to do. In the passing step, we first generate an AST, which is an abstract syntax tree containing C++ components. And we are using Silang to produce it, because it's a compiler that is able to do this in Python. And then we do a semantic analysis of the AST to produce an ASG. The main difference is the uniqueness of components and edges representing relationships among these components. I will not talk here about the control step, but later. And the generated step is just using the SG with Python code and predefined rules, just, such as with the macro templating engines, to ge generate C++ uh, wrappers and some Python uh, files. Here is an example of the uh, macro templating engine. It's just a string when you put your C++ uh, code. And um, you can have conditional uh, writing of, the, of this code using uh, Python objects, like enumeration here. So you can define your enumeration with global name using uh, a renaming of this, uh, of this enumeration for having the Python, Python name and loop over all enumerators contained in this enumeration. I will take the example of Eigen, because it's a pure template library that is uh, 
really frequent in C++, the first thing you need to do is to write a C++ header when you use type this to define which of the template instantiation you want to have in your, uh, in your Python library. Then you just need to create an abstract semantic graph, which is empty at the beginning, and use the parser with giving him the header to parses and the compilation flag. Once, is do, once this is done, you have a new ASG which is completed. And since I don't really know how Eigen is working internally, I just need the default control to have some rules predefined in order to generate my wrappers. Once I've done that, I just need to use the generator to write a Python, uh, Boost Python module, p eigen cpp, and a decorator, a p eigen p, and write them to disk. Normally, if I compile all the wrappers that, uh, that has generated, I have no errors, but since in uh, Eigen there is many template methods that are not available for temp specific template associations, there is some methods that are that you can launch only on 3D matrices, for example. We developed a GCC or c error parser in order to modify the ASG according to these errors, so you can bootstrap the process, and after all, having the wrappers that are, that are compiling. Just an example with the statistic case. Um, first, statistic is depending on Eigen, so the ASG that you give to the controller is the same as you add in the, uh, in the Eigen library in order to know which components you already wrapped. And here, since we're using STL containers, we need to have some controller that tells uh, AutoWig not to wrap some classes that are not really interesting, such as STDLess, STDHash, and execute them on the ASG. Um, just some recommendation to use AutoWig. It's better to follow some guidelines. So with Boost Python, we cannot use C arrays, and it's better to use smart pointers for memory management, but you could still define your own system using the, the Python code. And it's better to wrap either complete libraries or well-defined subsets with namespace or precise either. It's just in order to minimize the code you, you are producing in the control step. One of the advantages is the use of Python code in the uh, controller step because it allows you to define rules that can be conditional in, in terms of template instantiation. And you have, when you're developing a library, you have the same ID all along, so you write once your, your rules, and it will always generate the wrappers good. It has been used by, by me for wrapping the Silong library. As perhaps you know, the libcilong is a Python bindings for the Silong library, but doesn't have everything. So we use these Python bindings to rewrap Silong and to bootstrap the process and have a, uh, an IST which contains all C++ nodes. It has been used on Eigen or STL containers and my libraries, which is in fact the only one that, that uh, follows the guidelines I, I gave, but I didn't encounter any problem with Silong and Eigen. Just need, have some problem with structure analysis, which is a C++ library developed in my lab, but that was a constrict before the STL. It's quite old and mostly C so it's not really adapted. Uh, the code is on GitHub. You can uh, see the documentation and Jupyter notebooks to see how it's work on the read the docs. You can play with Docker images, and of course, uh, you can install it uh, using Conda. And uh, you can look at the papers that will probably be published in PG Computer Science. But that's all. Excellent. Um, can the next speaker come down and get set up? And in the meanwhile, I'll go around asking. Uh, 
Yeah, this is a promising approach on a on an important uh, task in uh, scientific computing to uh, do this connection between the uh, much used C++ and, and Python. Um, do you uh, see this already at production level? How would you ensure long-term maintainability of this? And a specific question, um, you use error messages from CLang to uh, get uh, the template instantiation right. Um, are these long-term stable uh, or would you get problems with new CLang versions having new format of error messages? Yes, yeah, the problem is with CLang it's not really stable. Uh, it seems to have been uh, stabilized in order uh, for classes concerning only the IST. I just need those classes. So if they are making any change, I need to rewrite the parser. But it's uh, in Python code, and it's uh, about 1,000 lines. So it's not really so big. But it's true that we need to maintain this. Um, I don't know how my team will, uh, will act on this. Uh, perhaps I will continue, but I don't know. Um, OK, thank you very much.